Hey guys and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the CX Trees library used for generating EXEs from Python files. CX Trees is used for deployment and distribution of Python applications. It's pretty handy because let's say that you want to give your application to a friend and he doesn't have Python installed. But what you can do is generate an EXE using CX Freeze because otherwise he would have to go and install Python, install all of the libraries that you're using, and even then there might still be issues because of other hardware and other, uh, other issues that can happen. So what you do is generate an EXE using something like CX Freeze, which packages all those dependencies into a single EXE or a single folder. Okay, so let's begin. What you need to do, to, what you need to do first is install CX Freeze, okay, like this. Pip install CX Freeze. I already have it, so it'll just say requirement already satisfied. Now what we need to do is begin using it. There are two different ways of doing so. You can either do it completely through the console, but I don't really recommend this approach because it's a bit tedious, especially when the configuration is getting complex, like. Uh, Basically, the command can get to like three or four lines long, and having to rewrite that is a bit annoying and hard to read. Okay, so I'm going to use the other approach, which is involving a setup file. Now, CX Freeze provides us with a handy way of getting started with this approach, the setup file approach. Okay, just do this, type in this command, and it's going to ask you a few questions. Just make sure to run this command in the same folder as your Python file that you wish to convert, okay? Like this is our file, tutorial.py. So I'm calling it in the same folder, the CX Freeze folder, where you can see my tutorial.py file. So my tutorial, sorry, my project name can be tutorial, version is one, description is a YouTube tutorial, and Python file to make the executable from tutorial.py, and then the executable file name, I can just use the same name Okay, that my project is tutorial. Okay, and then it asks me whether I want to make a console based application or a GUI based application. We're using take hinter over here, so I'm going to say G for GUI. Then over here, it's asking me whether I want to, uh, you know, what the name of the setup file should be. If you just press enter, it'll use setup.py by default or you can just type in setup.py or anything that you really want to. It doesn't make a difference. Just press enter and it'll use setup.py by default. And now it's asking me whether it should run this command. This is the command for generating the exe. I don't want to generate this just yet. I want to talk about the setup.py file a bit that just generated over here. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, basically we have this build options over here. This is important. These options are important. We'll discuss them a bit later. Packages, basically, this list over here is a list of libraries that you want to include. Now, CX Freeze will, by default, automatically detect and include most libraries, okay? So you don't need to actually sit here and add every single library that you're using, okay? No need to do that. We only use it in exceptional circumstances excludes is used to exclude any libraries. If you generate your exe and you find out that CX Freeze is including some extra libraries that you don't need, this is very common by the way, because CX Freeze works by just copy pasting your entire Python environment into the exe. It doesn't, it's not very accurate in telling which libraries are actually being used. So this can cause problems. So later on, we'll actually take a look at excluding those extra libraries to bring down the size of our folder and increase its load time. Okay, over here, basically we're saying that it's a GUI application. You can just say console over here if it's a console-based application. Over here is just the name of our file, and this is where we store this. And here's some other options, the name, the version number, description, etc. Now we'll go ahead and run this command, okay? And this will generate our folder. It's just gonna take a while. It'll take about five, 10 minutes, maybe depending on your system. 
So I'm going to pause the video right here and resume once we're done. All right, so our exe is now generated in this build folder. Okay, we're going to open it up. I'm going to go into the build folder and over here. Okay, and this is our exe. This is the lib folder where all the dependencies are, and we can see it's 533 MB. All right, that is really big. First, let's just see whether the application is working. Okay, and I'll tell you how to improve the size later on. Okay, it's taking a few seconds to load, and that's to be expected. And maybe it's because I have my screen recorder on. All right, and now we have an error. And to be honest, I expected this. I actually deliberately picked a code where I knew there would be some errors. Okay, I picked a specific arrangement of libraries that I knew would raise an error or two because I, do, I don't want to show you guys a perfectly running script. Okay, I want to show you guys some problems occurring and then teach you guys how to solve them. Okay, so here's our first problem. Our problem over here states that, uh, look over here, somewhere down here. It says, cannot import name util from a partially initialized module pandas table, most likely due to a circular import. Okay, this is a circular import issue. And what this means is that there's basically a circular import issue. You can Google this term up, but basically it's what's happening when one library is importing another and the other library somewhere down the line is importing the one that originally called it, something like that. So what you can do to prevent this issue from happening is to explicitly tell uh, CX3s that you are including that library, okay? So whichever library shows up in the error, just copy paste that library into the packages list. Okay, and that way the error will resolve itself. Okay, I'm gonna uh, go back here for a second and I want to open up this lib folder. Before we run the code again and resolve that error, I'm just gonna show you how we can reduce the size. Okay, so we can see all these libraries in here. All right, that's a lot of libraries. And um, we can already see that there's some libraries here like pyqt5, pyqt6, simpy, uh, SQL Lite, which is for databases, PYQT5 and PYQT6 are for GUI. It's like an alternative to Takinter. And then we can see a few more here, like URL Lib, which is for internet connections, OpenPy Excel, which is for Excel files. My, now, my point is that all of these are libraries that are installed on my system, but they are not being used in this particular application. Now, there are two ways of resolving this. I'll show you the first one. I'm going to go over here into my excludes and then type in pyqt5 over here. Type in pyqt6. Then I'll type in SQLite 3. And what else did we have? Uh, what, what, what else was there? All right, simpy. All right, and you get the guest, OK? I can go go ahead and add in more. But there is one issue. I'm going to run the command again. All right. Now, there's something I need to tell you. First of all, you can not perfectly, like, look at all this. There's so many libraries in here, and you won't even recognize most of them. Well, ab about half of them. The reason for that is whenever you download a library, it do downloads several dependencies along, along with it. So, like, you download NumPy or you download matplotlib, it actually installs four or five other libraries along with it. <clears throat> so you might not even know that you need that library. So you don't want to end up accidentally excluding that library that you needed. Like, let's say that you installed module A, which installed module B. And you see module B later on in your build folder, and you're like, hey, I didn't install that. And then you remove it. And then module A ends up crashing because it doesn't have module B anymore. So that's kind of what I want, what, what I want to tell you. To avoid this issue, you can use a virtual environment. A virtual environment basically is like a fresh Python installation. It's not actually a, a separate Python installation. It's like a it's like a duplicate of your existing Python installation, but without all the libraries, without all the extra libraries. So you can use a virtual environment and run CX trees in there, and that way you can only ha inc end up including the libraries that you actually need. It's a separate discussion, virtual environments. You can go check out a video I have on it. It's actually a pretty long video. And I made that video for another 
Python file to exe converter called PyInstaller. But you can easily watch the video, it's the same thing. Just replace the, end, the steps at the end where we call the PyInstaller commands, replace them with the cxfreeze command, it's the same thing, really. Anyways, we're just gonna wait till this gets finished and then we'll resume the video. And so we are finally done. Let's go over to our build folder. And here, I'm gonna go back in here and find our exe, click on it, and let's see what happens. Okay. And good, it works. Great. So this is basically our code working. That's really just the error we faced. We only faced one problem. There are other issues that can occur that I'm aware of when using different options. Like I know a problem, for example, if you try adding an icon to CX Freeze, if you downloaded Python from the Microsoft Store, then it's gonna cause problems. You need to reinstall Python from a different source. That's just one example of an issue that can occur. Now I'm gonna make different videos on CX Freeze, okay? Because I can't bundle everything into the same video. That's gonna get way too long. There are other issues that can occur. And I'll tell you about one more right now, just in case. It's an issue I faced with some other library, but I didn't include that in this video, uh, in this application that we just created over here, because uh, it's a very obscure library. Not many people actually use that. It's a very niche library, but I'll just tell you about it just in case. If you face an issue where some code of yours, sorry, when CX freeze raises an error, something like missing DLLs, missing a folder, missing something, something, so just go over to your Python installation over here. This is your Python installation. Lib, I think. Yeah, lib over here. And if you're curious, the library that gave me that problem, go over here to site packages. And you can see all the dependencies over here that get installed when you run something. Okay, so just go over here. And the library that I faced a problem with was called Shapely, Shapely, okay? And this folder was missing. This folder was missing when CX Freeze was trying to find it. I assume it wasn't able to properly include this folder for some reason. So if you face a problem like that, copy paste this folder, go over to your folder over here and include it in this lib folder, okay? Like this, copy, copy paste it in here. That's one solution that worked for me. So you guys might find that useful. Okay, I'm sure that there's a way of properly including that uh, in the setup script somewhere over here, over here. I'm sure there is, I didn't really look into it much. So anyways, that's just what I know about CX Freeze. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more about CX Freeze and other features that it has, uh, I will be making more videos on that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and hope you guys stay tuned for future videos, okay? See you guys in the next one.